Hello everyone, welcome along to today's webinar where we'll be discussing the closure of the Portuguese Golden Visa, the timelines that you need to be aware of, and crucially the law regarding this aspect. This will be an essential session for anyone already on a Golden Visa or who has been thinking about getting onto the program. Uh, spoiler alert, the first of, uh, of a couple today, as of April 2023, um, as of April 2023, i.e. time of this webinar, it is not too late. Um, and we'll be exploring the reasons why in just a few minutes time. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. There is a Q&A box provided on your screen. So please do use that for any questions you may have um, and we'll come to them at the end. Um, I anticipate there being quite a few questions this time, um, although maybe I've jinxed it by saying that. Uh, so we'll allow plenty of time for questions at the end in addition to any extra feedback that you might have. Um, right, so let's kick off. Let's kick off. There we go. Right. What's on the agenda for today? So we're going to focus um, on the history and the outlook for the Golden Visa. So we'll get started by asking the question, how did we get here? We'll look at re recent history and developments from the political and legislative perspectives uh, before then examining what the actual legal position looks like today, like I say, here in April 2023. If you'd like to know more about the Portuguese Golden Visa, the process, how it compares to the other Portuguese visas that are available, the pathway to citizenship, uh, then do check out my other webinar, Portugal Golden Visa, everything you need to know, which is available on YouTube. Just search for Portuguese, Portugal Golden Visa, everything you need to know, and my name, Jonathan Ralph, and that should come up. Now, after we've looked at the legal context, we will explore what changes are incoming later this year. Um, and what that actually means for you as investors or potential investors. There's been a lot of controversy and trying to watch my words here, plenty of misinformation around this point in recent weeks. Uh, fair to say that some journalists have been quite keen to bring us news that uh, perhaps wasn't wholly accurate. Um, so let's set the record straight there and get away from Donald Trumpism and talking about fake news. Uh, we'll then took it, we'll, let's take a look at the, uh, the timelines um, and what you need to do now uh, before examining the key challenges facing those looking to get onto the Golden Visa program before it does end for good. We'll then look at the outstanding investments remaining in the market today before closing today's session with, as I mentioned, an extended Q&A. Um, so that's what's in store. Let's dive in. Now, a quick word on Holborn Assets to get started. If you've watched our other sessions, you might have seen this slide before. Uh, so just to recap who we are, it's important you have that background. We're one of the largest expat financial services firms going. We're specialized in investment solutions for internationally minded people. Um, and our aim, our company motto is to put the right money in the right place at the right time. What does that mean? It means being with you for all the major financial milestones in your life. Now, we currently serve over 20,000 clients across more than 100 different countries. We manage just over $3 billion worth of client assets. Uh, so that does mean that we're a little bit different, or rather significantly different from many operators in the Golden Visa space. Why? Because our core business is a regulated activity. Uh, so we have a division that's regulated via the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK, another that's regulated in the EU via our European head office, which is actually in Cyprus. Um, so in that business, that's actually where I spend most of my time uh, when I'm not here presenting webinars to, uh, to you guys. Um, and also we hold other investment licenses for the major jurisdictions around the world, such as Dubai and other major financial hubs. We're multi-award winners, extremely proud of our 4.8 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot. So we are firmly at the head of the offshore financial services market. And perhaps more important, certainly for today, is that we have handled, or our, our team, I should say, has handled more than 1,000 golden visas at a 100% success rate. Now that's more than 10% of all the golden visas ever issued in Portugal. The last time I checked, maybe the figures have moved on slightly since uh, since that since then. Um, but still, by working with us, you can be sure that you are in good hands with a tried and trusted expert. Like I say, we are an expert team, highly experienced, and with a fantastic track record of putting our clients first. 
very quickly on me. So my name is Jonathan. I'm a senior wealth manager here at Holborn Assets. Now, my background, I'm a fully qualified and licensed financial advisor to expats around the world. I've been an expat for around a decade. However, I qualified back in the United Kingdom. Uh, and my main area of focus professionally is helping people all over the world to, say, to secure a European future for their family. If you'd like to contact me at any point during this session or afterwards, you can see my email address on the scheme up on the scheme on the screen there uh, jonathan.ralph at holbornassets.com i don't bite so please feel free to get in touch with any questions you might have okay so how did we get here what is the background well the truth is that the end of the golden visa program has been rather well telegraphed and a long time coming truth be told on your right here, um, we see Prime Minister Antonio Costa and President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, the EU has long been a staunch opponent of any kind of, of uh, immigrant investor program, such as the Golden Visa, and it is perhaps the world's worst kept secret uh, that almost all European residency by investment schemes are being essentially forced to close due to pressure being applied by Brussels. Now, it is no coincidence that Ireland, for example, scrapped its investor visa just days before Portugal announced its intention to do the same. Greece is also tightening up their scheme, and there is now rife speculation that Spain will shortly follow suit. Now, in the case of Portugal, Prime Minister Costa at least tried to pretend uh, that he wanted to scrap the golden visa to gain better control over the housing market, uh, which has been ballooning in recent times. But this is, a, this is a suggestion that, frankly, is so far removed from reality, it is almost ridiculous. Um, and it is precisely for that reason that the Portuguese government's initial proposals to end the golden visa were widely condemned by virtually all stakeholders in the country. However, we are where we are. Now, the Golden Visa program will be ending, as we know. We know this with absolute certainty, and it is a part of a wider European trend to do away with the practice of citizenship for sale. In terms of timelines, this is how it's unfolded. Now, November 2022 was really a catalyst, basically the starting point. Now, whilst there had been speculation for a long time leading up to this date, this was when the end of the Golden Visa first started to really rear its head in earnest. Now, this was when the Communist Party of Portugal proposed the ending of the program. Very interestingly, Antonio Costa's ruling Socialist Party actually opposed this measure, and it's such a short time ago as well, and the proposal was summarily dismissed by Parliament. How strange, you might think. Regardless, after the popularity of the scheme grew and grew, with demand being driven by Americans uh, essentially looking to escape political unrest, gun violence, etc., um, and Brits looking to escape the consequences of Brexit as well with a second citizenship. Now, this drew further attention to the Golden Visa itself. And in February 2023, Antonio Costa formally announced his intention or his government's intention um, to end the program. Now, officially, like I say, this was to ease the housing situation in the country, although no impact analysis was actually ever produced. And this suggestion was roundly ridiculed by essentially all concerned. Fast forward to March, and now an initial two week public consultation period on the proposal was extended after much consternation and quite a significant amount of outcry from lawyers, real estate developers, economists and investors alike. Interestingly, the government of Madeira even came out to blast the measures, um, insisting that they, as a region, would not comply. And then even worse, the Portuguese president himself disparaged Costa's proposals, calling them unworkable. Now, Costa and his government then proceeded to essentially ignore every single one of them and then plowed ahead regardless, uh, insisting on a retroactive cutoff date for all new golden visas of the 16th of February. You might have read about that in the press. Now, as I, we had, as a company, had pointed out in previous communications, such a retroactive date is quite simply unconstitutional. Uh, eventually, Costa and his government were forced to yield on this point, and that actually brings us to the present day. And our key takeaway from this particular slide, golden, golden visa applications can continue until a new legal framework is established. So talking about legal frameworks then, what is the current legal framework? Let's break this down into two use cases because there will be people from both sides um, of, of this particular scenario um, on this session. Now, getting started with new golden visa applicants, I would hazard a guess that this is likely to be the majority of you on the session today. 
As I've already hinted, new Golden Visa applications are being accepted, they are being processed as normal, and this will continue to be the case until a new law can be passed and actually take effect. Now, leading law firms across Portugal believe that the earliest any new law can actually be discussed will be mid-May. And even if things progress as smoothly as possible, the discussion period will last for a minimum 45 days before the law can even be passed. Therefore, we are realistically looking at a cutoff date of the end of June 2023. However, we here at Holborn, we prefer not to take any chances, particularly with such a monumentous uh, event in, in investors' lives, such as obtaining a golden visa and a European passport. So we are looking to, or rather, we are working to an internal deadline of end of May 2023 to ensure that we deliver the required outcomes for our clients and that no one is left outside of the golden visa program when it does eventually end. It's also very important to note that CEF, um, so the Portuguese Immigration Authority, cannot legally postpone, hinder, or reject any golden visa applications until a, new, until a new law is actually in effect. So therefore, we continue as normal. So that's the top half. Now looking at the second half, the next use case. Now that's of existing golden visa residence permit holders. Now at your next renewal, your golden visa will be converted to a D2 resident visa. This is typically the entrepreneur's visa. However, this is purely a change in naming convention, i.e. just the name of the visa and nothing more in practice. You will retain the same rights and privileges that you have under the current golden visa. In fact, it would be unconstitutional and illegal for the government to try to change that. Um, so what does that mean? That means actually crucially that the seven day physical stay requirement per year is maintained. It's all that's required for legal residency. Now, the government had tried to extend that to 183 days, i.e. six months, uh, but this, of course, would have been unconstitutional once again, um, so this is not coming in. Just in case you were thinking, um, why should I listen to Jonathan? Uh, who is he? What does he know? Well, firstly, you clearly haven't been paying attention to my other content, in which case, shame on you. Uh, but as I've been saying the, the same, uh, I've been saying the same thing in virtually every video, every blog, every social media post. So we are exactly where we said we were going to be all year. Uh, but just in case that's not enough and you'd like to hear it from someone else, here are the legal opinions from two leading law firms in Portugal. So that's Prime Legal um, on the right and Pax Legal on the left. Each of these legal statements essentially summarizes uh, in different words what we've just discussed on the previous slide. So if you're watching this webinar live, um, you'll be sent the recording after the session. Um, so if you'd like to pause uh, at this juncture and go through yourself, um, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, do contact me via email for a full written legal statement if you prefer. Okay, so recapping the key points. The Golden Visa is ending, we know this. To access the scheme and avoid disappointment, the time to act is most certainly now. This is not a drill, people. This really is your last chance to get on the Portuguese Golden Visa program before it closes for good. We have until the new law is passed to get your application submitted. And whilst this may be at the end of June, um, this is not yet certain or confirmed. And there is always the risk of the government finding a legal loophole to fast track their plans in some way. So we need to be mindful of that. In order to make it onto the program safely, we need to hit a key milestone of actually making the investment, submitting the application to the CEF, um, and obtaining uh, your ARI number, which is essentially your Golden Visa case number. If we can do that before the new law is passed, then you can be legally grandfathered into the scheme, even if the law changes before you are officially approved. Now, to manage expectations, Holborn is currently working around the clock to get all clients to this milestone ASAP. We're taking clients from beginning to end. What does that mean? I.e. initial agreements all the way through to application submission within three to four weeks um, in most cases. Now, that is, of course, very, very fast processing. I think that reflects just how hard we're working behind the scenes. Now, there is a lot of admin to be completed within that time frame, however, including obtaining the NIFs, so your tax numbers, opening the bank account, preparing all documents, having them translated and apostled, etc. So I must insist, if you are serious about getting onto the Golden Visa program, do not delay, get started immediately. 
If we can begin the process together by the end of April 2023, we are highly confident of getting you comfortably over the line well before the law actually changes. But even if we can't do that, Holborn is writing 100% money back guarantees into our client agreements in the event that we've missed the deadline and cannot get you onto the scheme. So we are essentially taking on the risk for you. I can go through that in further detail one to one when we look at our client agreements together. Now, we don't do this because we like it. We don't do this because we're nice people, although I like to think that we are nice people. We do this simply because we are supremely confident of getting the job done, and we are very happy to put our money where our mouth is on that point. That said, there are some key challenges to overcome to get there. Now, the first is documentation. We'll have to have your administrative presence established in Portugal as soon as possible. And we do have some channels um, that are exclusively open to us here at Holborn that allow our clients to fast track this process. We will, however, need your timely support in having all required documentation translated, apostled and couriered to Portugal with the minimum of delay. And we have a very friendly processing team, in addition to myself, uh, who will be very, very happy to help you every step of the way to make that happen. The bigger challenge is actually the availability of qualifying investments. Now, property developers are very highly unlikely to announce any more projects now that the Golden Visa program is officially ending. I mean, why would they? So what we have on the market is essentially what is available. Naturally, we are experiencing very, very high demand for these investments now that this is the last chance to access the Golden Visa scheme. Now that the government has formally yielded on its position to backdate everything to February 16th, and that is no longer possible. Despite that demand, uh, prices and financial packages are remaining exactly the same, but this means that availability will likely run out a long time before the new law is actually implemented. So to avoid disappointment, make sure you get in touch right now and we can discuss what your best available option is. And I can walk you through that uh, together. So if you're ready to actually explore the best routes open to you, I suggest that you drop me an email at jonathan.ralph at holbornassets.com. I'll be very, very happy to meet you on a no obligation basis. So we'd essentially set up a brief introductory call. I'd walk you through the best available options for you. We'd go through your circumstances and make sure we're doing the right things. No pressure, no obligations, just making sure that we give you the best possible solution for your family. Um, right. Um, contact information on the screen. Let's look at some of the inf investment options that we can still access as of today here in April 2023. And what I'm going to do now is show you three outstanding investment cases currently available in the Golden Visa landscape. Uh, the first one that we'll look at is the Royal Obidosh. I've mentioned this in previous webinars. We're actually going to look at a little bit of a different angle with Royal Obidosh here today. Um, so Royal Obidosh pertains to the 500,000 euro category, but the option I'm going to show you um, actually offers a whopping 200,000 euro capital gain after five years with a full title deed and a guaranteed buyback. This is my personal favorite investment case, but of course the required investment is uh, on the high side versus the other alternatives that exist. Number two is the highest yield at the minimum entry point. This is a hotel project with the Wyndham Garden called Palacio do Sal. The yield here is outstanding. So we're talking about a 20,000 euro upfront yield plus an additional package uh, totaling around 35,000 euro, depending on um, your individual application uh, and, and a few nuances in there. The drawback here is that we're talking about fractional ownership rather than full title deed, but it is a very, very compelling financial case. And then finally, we'll wrap, we'll wrap things up by looking at number three, uh, which is the yellow tulip, the best option for an investor looking to minimize risk through a low investment amount and still full title deed. So this is a hotel in the Algarve where you purchase the title deed to two studio apartments in a hotel complex for a price between 285 and 295,000 euros, which is fantastic value. So getting started with the Royal Obidosh, uh, who is this for? This is the best investment if you're looking for the highest yield and an outstanding risk management position and are flexible on the price point. Now, the trade off is that this requires you to tie up uh, a significant amount of capital. But if you can stretch to it, the investment case makes it worth it to most people. It's a five star resort. It also means that you can enjoy it that little bit more um, when you come in and stay there in order to meet the onward citizenship and residency requirements. As far as location goes, just north of Lisbon. So it's a five star hotel in historic Obidosh, which is on the Silver Coast. Um, we're talking about a, a 50, 45, 50 minute drive north of, of Lisbon. Um, and it's just a few minutes to the historic town center of Obidosh itself and its renowned lagoon. 
Um, it's also right next to the surfing capital of Europe, which is Nazare, which is right there on your doorstep. Golden Visa apartments in Royal Lobby Lodge were actually built in 2021. The main hotel building, which what you can see here at the uh, top of the hill here, was actually built in 2009. Fully completed operational resort. It's rated 8.7 out of book at 8.7 out of 10, I should say, on Booking.com. Um, it's got many reviews on there, so more than 1,700 at the time of this webinar. As the properties that qualify for the Golden Visa are actually new builds, this qualifies for the Golden Visa at the 500,000 euro mark. Now the offer here is for two studio apartments, uh, each individually appraised at 350,000 euros, which are available uh, for a combined total of just 500,000 euros, meeting that Golden Visa requirement. So the financial case, arguably the most important part of any investment case, Yes, what we're talking about here is an investment that is more expensive than the 280,000 minimum amount, but my clients will receive a guaranteed buyback at 700,000 euros after five years. So purchase price of 500,000 euros, no rental yield, but a buyback at 700,000 euros after the five years. This makes it the most profitable Golden Visa investment anywhere in Portugal, bar none. So if you want to get passports for your family, make a healthy capital gain, make a healthy profit at the same time, this is most likely the, pro the project you should be looking at if you can stretch to it. However, we are almost out of availability in this development um, as we are with essentially every investment that we, we can offer. So if this is the one for you, please do reach out as soon as you can to avoid disappointment. Um, just a quick note on the risk management position. Um, it's an outstanding risk management position why? Because the buildings are 100% finished, so no construction risk, and you have the peace of mind of the full title deed. Um, so as an investment, it really is quite standout. And at the time of this webinar, we have enough availability for three more investors uh, to get on the Golden Visa via this route. Okay, a couple of pictures um, of the development. Now we can go through this together um, on a one-to-one -one basis if this is an interesting um, development for you to look at yourself. But let's move on to the second one now, which is the Palacio do Sal. This is our uh, recent launch for 2023. This one is a little bit different, like I mentioned, because we're talking about a fractional ownership model, owning a percentage of a building rather than a full title deed to your own uh, apartment or two apartments, as is the case with the Obibosh and actually the other tulip as well. So who's this one for? Now, if you're not put off by fractional ownership and you're looking for the highest available yield at the lowest possible price point, then this is likely the one that you should be considering. As regards the location, it's a similar distance from Lisbon to uh, Obidos, just in the opposite direction. Um, and a little bit more inland as well. Now, it's right on the banks of the Sava River, which is next to the Nature Preserve. Uh, you're actually a 25 minute um, drive to the nearest beach, which is found at Comporta, uh, which is due west from the hotel itself. You can just about see it on the map there if you if you zoom in. Now, what are we talking about with Palacio do Sal? It's a 280,000 euro investment in exchange for fractional ownership of a hotel that is very near completion. Um, it's over 80% done now and it'll be opening to guests in the spring of 2024. Uh, it's a prestigious hotel operated under the Wyndham brand, which is a globally uh, renowned hotel chain, of course, uh, and uh, it's operating actually under the Wyndham Garden moniker. Now, once it's open, owners will have the right to use the hotel for free for up to seven days per year, allowing them to meet the Golden Visa residence criteria. Incidentally, I don't think I mentioned that for Obidosh. Obidosh has a six week uh, free stay allowance, which is frankly outstanding. But uh, with the Palacio do Sal, you have up to seven days per year, which still allows you to meet uh, your residency requirements in Portugal for citizenship. The financials are particularly interesting uh, for Palacio do Sal. Um, the property pays an upfront gross rental yield of 20,000 euros now. Of course, tax does need to come out of that, but it's a very attractive yield for the price point. On top of this, the developer will cover uh, all taxes, VAT, um, well, VAT on the works, tax, re uh, tax representation, and even um, the majority of your legal fees um, for the lifetime of the investment. So that's an additional value of around 35,000 euros, which is quite compelling. There is a mandatory buy buyback rather than optional, um, which is, well, the Obidosh is, is an optional buyback. This is a mandatory buyback. Uh, this is actually quite important on a fractional ownership model such as this. This occurs in year six or later. Uh, now, the buyback is a bit more open ended um, than the options we have that offer a full title deed. So you do need a little bit more flexibility on your timelines for getting your capital back. Bear that in mind. That said, the yield on this opportunity is truly outstanding. Now, as a financial case, you won't find better at this price point. However, um, 
As I've mentioned in previous videos, my recommendation would usually remain for a full title deed for most investors. So do make sure that you're comfortable with the fractional ownership model before moving forward with this one. Now, at the time of this webinar, we have enough space for around eight more investors, although I'm told uh, that this is actually a very, very popular option right now and selling extremely fast indeed. Uh, so that number may actually be lower by the time we finish this session. So photos of the interior, just to give you a flavor. So we will have better quality images once the hotel is actually completed, but this is a flavor of what we're looking at. Uh, now, moving on to option three, so the yellow tulip. Now, this is the only investment case that I have seen at the 280,000 minimum entry point that offers a full title deed. This offers a much lower yield, um, but it is still interesting just for that reason alone, having that full title deed. So who's this for? Is it the one for you? If you want the comfort and peace of mind of a full title deed, but are trying to keep to a strict purchase budget of the absolute minimum for the Portuguese golden visa, then this is likely the one for you. It means that you tie up less capital than the Obidosh, although this does mean a lower yield in exchange for the title deed to the property. As regards the location, very desirable for the target market is right on the coast and nestled in between Lagos and Portimao. It's near the region's prestigious golf courses, Alvor's historical town center and other attractions. It's a very popular area for sun and beach tourism. And these are the key facts. So it's another completed building. So again, no construction risk, just like the Obidosh, but um, it is a refurbishment project, uh, which is required in order to qualify the 280,000 level in Portugal. Again, buying a full title deed, I think I've labored that point enough, but this time to, uh, well, like I've mentioned before, um, exactly the same as, as Obidosh. It's a full title deed to two studio apartments. These studios are a little bit smaller than the Obidosh ones. They're 25 square meters each. That is, of course, reflected in the price. The hotel is a four-star resort um, in the Algarve, currently rated 6.8 out of 10 on booking.com. But the reason for that slightly lower rating than the Obidosh um, mostly relates to the need to refurbish the building. So you can go on booking.com, have a look for yourself. Um, and the refurbishment work is, of course, being done as part of this process, which is why it qualifies at the 280,000 level. Now, owners can stay here for free for up to two weeks per year. So again, more than enough to be able to fulfill onward residency and, and citizenship requirements. But looking at the most important part, the financials. So what are we talking about here? Now, as this is a refurbishment project, the first two, year, the first two years do not actually offer a rental yield. However, the developer will offer the equivalent of a 3.3% um, rental yield upfront for uh, years three, four, and five, uh, which actually, uh, if you play it out, gives a total of between 20 and 22,000 euros net. Now, rather than paying that to you as a rental yield, this is used to cover purchase taxes on the property to minimize uh, the tax reporting for the buyer, to minimize uh, the need for capital outlay early on in the process. Uh, so this is front loaded, and then there is no further yield after this. So the yield is used to pay taxes and fees. That's what you need to know. The same buyback conditions as the Obidosh uh, are essentially offered here. So secured via a contract, it's actually with the same developer called Excelium Capital. They're our preferred partner for Golden Visa projects. If you'd like to know more about that relationship, do let me know in the question box and I can explain a little bit more about that dynamic in a bit more detail. But there's a very, very good reason um, why we work with them. We do so on an exclusive basis. They are very, very solid and we're very happy to put our brand and our name um, to that relationship. If you choose not to enforce the buyback, uh, you can enter into a profit sharing agreement with the hotel developer um, from year six onwards. Now, this profit sharing arrangement is set at 50% of hotel profits, which actually makes this a very compelling investment if you're holding it for the longer term. If you're not interested in that and you just want a return of capital, then you can instruct the developer to buy you back at your purchase price uh, after the initial five year term. Again, there's no construction risk here uh, because we're talking about finished buildings. Um, and cash flows are front loaded, as I've mentioned, which makes this an outstanding investment case. It is a wonderful option if you're looking to tie up the lowest possible amount of capital, but still have the security of the full title deed. However, units have been flying in the yellow tulip recently, and there are currently only two units left. Um, and it's possible that one of those is about to be sold uh, as I'm speaking to you right now. Again, once they're gone, they're gone. So we need to act quickly if this is the right one for you. A few photos now just to show you what we're talking about in terms of the, the property itself. 
Uh, so this is post renovation. So these are of course renders. Uh, this is a, a more realistic vi uh, view of what the hotel actually looks like at present. This is the booking.com page. So do take a look. It's currently branded as Yellow Alvor Garden. It will be rebranded to Yellow Tulip after the renovation to reflect the increase in standard and quality. But you can take a look at it in its current guise under Yellow Alvor Garden now. Okay, so up to now, hopefully this has been a useful session for you and perhaps we've even shown you what could potentially be the best investment for you if you want to sneak onto the Golden Visa program before it does eventually end for good. So let's quickly look at next steps, what actually needs to happen to get you started with your Golden Visa. Uh, first things first, get in touch with me. I will create uh, ASAP, a bespoke quotation for you and your family um, that meets your, your needs and your, your objectives for the Golden Visa. I'll then need copies of your passports and a proof of address to run a background check uh, alongside my team. Once that's uh, out of the way, uh, we'll complete a client agreement and a reservation form to secure the unit in your name. We can do that um, ASAP to make sure that a unit is secured. That is particularly important given the low availabilities, as I mentioned, that are out there right now. So once we've done that, uh, we'll ask you to pay the reservation deposit as well. Uh, so our team will get to work um, uh, our team will get to work by setting up your, your Portuguese bank account, obtaining your tax numbers. We will do that post haste to make sure we're in the best possible position. And then with that done, any remaining paperwork such as uh, rental agreements, buyback agreements will be signed. Uh, the deed transfer will be affected and then we'll have your application submitted to the Portuguese authorities uh, for pre-approval. We will obtain your ARI number, which will, as I mentioned, uh, be sufficient for you to be grandfathered into the scheme in its current legal framework. And then you're well on your way to becoming an official, an official resident of Portugal and receiving your dual citizenship in a few years time. And that's it. So we've raced through it as, uh, as fast as we could, but I hope that was helpful for you today. Uh, first step, as I mentioned, is to get in touch. Uh, so please feel free to drop me a message anytime at jonathan.ralph at holbornassets.com. When you're ready to get the ball rolling, I will be delighted to help you uh, on your way uh, to becoming a Portuguese resident. Uh, I will leave my contact information up here on the screen. So take that down if you'd like. Um, and now we can take a look at, at some of your questions. So as I mentioned, the Q&A box is, is there on your screen. So do feel free to use it if you have any questions. I'm going to go silent for a second now as I, as I see what's been coming in. Uh, anonymous, uh, please remember to put your name uh, on, the, uh, on the questions. Hello, sir. I'm from Nepal. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Nepalese, no problem with applying. Um, so that's absolutely fine. No restrictions on Nepalese as there are with the likes of, of, of Russians, unfortunately. Um, OK, uh, Mr. Hussein, uh, for permanent residency after five years of golden visa, uh, do I need um, the A2 language plus 35 days in five years for renewal? Permanent residency is permanent residency. Once you've got it, the language requirement um, is a requirement for citizenship. Uh, so if you're going for permanent residency, I'm sure, that, I'm sure you've got a reason for going for permanent residency and not citizenship, uh, then that's a little bit more uh, more flexible. Do bear in mind that the 35 days that you're alluding to uh, over five years, the golden visa is renewable in batches of two years. Uh, so what it actually is, is 14 days every, every two years, uh, which averages out to seven days per year. Um, so it's not just one shot, 35 days in five years, it's, it's two weeks every two years. So make sure you, you fulfill that. Um, requirement. Um, okay, I think there's been a couple more here. Let's just open this up. Um, right. Okay, right. Are the properties bought through Golden Visa applications need to change to a long term lease or be lived in by the owner? Uh, that's a very, very topical um, question. Uh, hang on, I've just been told I need to reset my camera. So hopefully that's now working again. Let me repeat that question. Are the properties bought through Golden Visa applications needing uh, to be changed to a long term lease or be lived in by the owner? This was something that Prime Minister Koshta um, uh, announced an intention um, to do uh, as part of the initial uh, package of measures that he wanted to bring in. Of course, 
Um, of course, this is not something that can change until the new law is passed. Uh, so currently, as we are, um, that is not something that can actually take effect. So we are still operating entirely under the previous legal framework. So we do not need to have a property that converts to a long term lease or lived in by the owner. Now, the properties that we are talking about in the three examples I've shown you here, we're, they, they're all underpinned by a long term lease agreement anyway. Um, and we're talking about commercial real estate, not residential real estate. So any changes to the law would unlikely, uh, would not be likely to affect them. But as it stands right now, there is no legal stipulation that requires them to change to a long-term lease will be lived in by the owner. Uh, this is something that again, uh, the Portuguese government announced uh, and yet was not able to back up with legislation. Um, so do not worry about that. Uh, okay, next one. Only the timeline and whether all of the avenues to a golden visa will close. For example, will fund investment still qualify? Uh, now, this is something that we're still actually waiting for clarification on. Now, um, the noises coming out of the Portuguese government are that the entirety of the golden visa program is in jeopardy here. Um, and the justification that's being uh, used is, is to solve the housing crisis. Now, if that is the justification and they're sticking to it, which as I mentioned is a, is, is a laughable suggestion, frankly, I, I would love to see the impact analysis. I would love to understand uh, the reasoning behind that. You look at any uh, economic uh, data or, 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 analyst, or analysis piece, you'll see that it, is, it just simply does not hold water. Uh, but the noises that we're hearing is that the, the Golden Visa program will be uh, cancelled indiscriminately. So uh, the future of the fund route is likely uh, in jeopardy as well. We are, of course, still waiting for confirmation on that, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, someone that already has a Golden Visa, this is our last renewal. Will it convert to a D2 visa is the first question. The answer is yes. Uh, well, of course, it depends on the renewal that, 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 that will, of course, happen after the, the new laws have taken uh, effect. Uh, and then follow up question after converting to D2, do we have to stay 183 days in Portugal? We've covered that in, in one of the previous slides. No, uh, you will have a special treatment uh, D2 visa, which will allow you to respect the previous terms for legal residency, which is a seven day legal residency requirement. Uh, in Portugal, where do I need to buy property to fulfill the legal requirements? Okay, uh, commercial real estate and residential real estate have different uh, different qualifying criteria. Now, what we're talking about here is commercial real estate, which can be bought anywhere in the country. Uh, of course, there are different thresholds in terms of minimum budget. Um, as to whether it's a low density area, then you know a lower minimum budget is required. Uh, is it a new build property then a higher minimum budget is required um, residential real estate is a little bit different it gets a little bit complicated as a general rule of thumb um, area well the greater lisbon greater porto and uh, most of the portuguese coastline uh, no longer qualify um, as uh, re what residential properties there no longer qualify for the golden visa Hope that helps. OK, as I heard, Golden Visa will be changed into D2. Do we have to meet the requirements too, or our previous visa requirements will be the same? No, this is a special type of D2 visa. You do not need to meet the requirements for a D2. You are meeting the requirements for the Golden Visa. This is a change in name only. Um, OK, from my understanding, there is a proposal to convert the Golden Visa D2 visas. Would retirees qualify? Yes, yes, exactly the same. Uh, you're qualifying for the Golden Visa under current terms. Um, so no issue there. Will the program be close to the Azores islands? Also, once the laws are passed, the laws will apply to all of Portugal. Uh, this is being done centrally. So yes, um, to buy property, what order would you try to approach things um, like NIF, attorney for real estate, bank account, etc. First things first, get in touch with get in touch with me, get in touch with my team. Uh, we will sign the client agreements first. We will secure the property in your name. Now that is, like I say, probably the most urgent point is securing the property because availability is severely limited. If you want a good investment case, you have to move now. So we will work to secure that. Once we've done that and signed those, uh, those agreements and, and brought you on as a client, the first thing we will do is get your tax number. Uh, we will take care of everything uh, to do with legal representation, bank accounts, all other considerations we will handle for you. So do not worry about that. 
And then lastly, uh, procedure for switching golden visas to D2 visas, not something you need to worry about. This is something that is being rolled out. And when it is rolled out, um, then this will, be a, this will be applied automatically. Do not worry. Um, so hopefully that answers all your questions. Uh, does anyone have anything else? I'm just going to see the questions that come. Oh, there's more in the other box. Right, let's go over here. Um, some people are putting their questions in the chat box. Um, so please do put them in the Q&A box. It's easier for me to see. Um, okay, 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 okay. Okay, do applications for the golden visa have to go through the consulate in the country of residence as per the D7 visa? No, this is something that we are handling for you. Um, so this is done essentially remotely. So we will use our, our, our legal team in Portugal to handle the submission of all documents on your behalf. Um, you may need to work with uh, a professional translation agency to get your documents apostled and couriered over to us, but we will handle everything for you. Uh, everything's handled via a power of attorney as well, which we granted via Zoom. Uh, so essentially all of this can be done from the comfort of your home. Um, so this is actually an easier way of, of doing this than the D7 where you need to go to the consulate. Um, okay, how long are we seeing from application to CEF interview? We are hearing it can take a year or more. Do you expect this waiting time to take longer with this last minute crunch? Now, this is a very, very hot button. Uh, thank you, um, thank you, Michelle, for, for answering that, for, uh, for asking that question. Um, this is something that is very, very variable. Now, we had a significant backlog last year where essentially we had a six month window when golden visas could not be submitted to the CEF platform. Uh, that caused a horrible backlog, some knock on effects. I mean, a lot of people couldn't get their interview for a long time. The after effects are still being felt from that, although a task force was set up to diminish or to, to address that backlog and to reduce the waiting times. Um, now, we're at a, we're at a situation where applica applications haven't been paused at any stage. They have been continuing as normal. Um, so we're not facing that backlog. But what we are facing is a rush of demand. We're facing the highest levels of demand we've ever seen. So uh, whilst we don't have six months worth of, um, of, of backdated cases to get through with the CEF, uh, we do have high volume. So uh, it is extremely difficult for me to say I can't commit to a, a specific timeline. It's out of our hands, I'm afraid. Um, but what we are advising clients is to allow anywhere between 10 to 12 months uh, from date of signing applications with us uh, to actually getting the residency card out the back end. So uh, call it a year uh, in total to actually get your residency cards uh, is, is what I would suggest. Will existing golden visa holders be treated differently to pending applicants? No, because the current law is the current law until the law changes. Everyone is being, um, everyone is, is subject to the same legal framework. It's only once the law changes that people that have their golden visa at that date have their grandfather rights and people that have uh, tried to access the scheme, even if it stays uh, stays here after the law changes, which is highly, highly unlikely. Of course, all the all the indicators are that the uh, the scheme is is closing entire entirely in its entirety. Um, but until that law actually changes, then everyone um, is is treated with their grandfather rights under current legal framework. Um, okay, will D2 conversion cost the same? Do you see it costing more or less uh, in the end? I don't, I don't foresee any changes, changes there. Um, for citizenship, uh, is a tie to Portugal required? Yes, and that is demonstrated through um, the uh, language test where you need to obtain A2 level Portuguese. Um, you can do that at any point um, during the five years to citizenship and you can take and fail the exam as many times as you want. Um, so I would recommend uh, just taking that box as early as you can in the process to demonstrate your tie to Portugal uh, so you have no issues when you're ready and you actually qualify for the citizenship after five years. Uh, okay, Ken asks, uh, once I have applied for the golden visa, do I have to comply with the Schengen 90 180 day limits? Now, Ken, that entirely depends on where you plan on spending your time. Um, if you are inside the EU um, and you're not an EU national and you don't have a separate EU visa, then um, you're going to be constrained by the terms of your EU visitor visa, uh, which will usually mean uh, the, the 90 to 180 day rule. 
uh, well, the 9180 day rule, I should say. Um, but, you know, with the golden visa, you are not constrained to Europe. You don't have to stay in Europe. So if I don't know where you are, sir, but if you are in the in the USA, um, for example, then you don't need to come to Portugal for any longer than seven days out of the calendar year. And that would be the the, the minimum amount of time um, that you would need to spend in Europe. And then the rest of the time you could spend back in, in your home country. I hope that one helps. Okay, I'm just going to go check the other box. For, uh, and uh, some more have come in, I think. Oh, no, those are the ones that I've uh, just done. So I think that's everything. Uh, so, guys, last last call for any final questions. Failing that, uh, do do send me an email, jonathan.ralph.holbornassets.com. I will be here to answer anything that you, uh, that you throw at me. And like I say, my team is working around the clock to make sure that everyone is... Uh, is processed in due order and in due time uh, and, and make sure that we uh, get everyone over the line before the law does eventually change.